your host, Billy Dean Shoemate III here, and welcome to another episode of Strange Places, where we look at the paranormal, the surreal, the unnatural. We dice it apart, we look at the evidence, and we see if uh, this is something that should be investigated further, or a big load of malarkey. And uh, what we're looking at today, based on the title here, we're definitely going to be going down the rabbit hole. So... This is a very, very in-depth, very interesting case. Now, disclaimer right off the bat, um, a lot of these words are going to be very difficult to pronounce. <laughs> so out of respect for, you'll find out, I'm going to pronounce a lot of these things very, very slowly. So uh, if you're wondering, no, I have not had a stroke. I haven't been hit in the head. <laughs> a lot of this, these things I'm going to have to really kind of sound out. If I can't do it, I'll abbreviate it. So this is called the Guaraparinga Reservoir case. Guaraparinga. Guaraparinga. Yeah. See? See what I mean? <laughs> the Guaraparinga Reservoir case. And this might be the only truly documented case of a human alien mutilation. Now, if this, complete with photos and everything, it's a bizarre case, and we'll really dig into it. If this case is authentically UFO-related, then all of us are going to have to reevaluate to one degree or another our tentative conclusions as to the possible specific intentions, moral perspectives, and general agenda that some of our extraterrestrial visitors may have. It's something that is utterly, at least to me, mind-blowing. But we'll look at it and see if this is something that should be looked into. Now, there have been rumors of homicidal, for lack of a better word, UFO-related human mutilation cases for some time. But hard evidence has been non-existent. Until now, I suppose. Brilliant, uh, Brazilian ufologist, we'll just call him E. Garcia, and Dr. Ruben Goes have recently presented a series of bizarre photographs obtained from police files which mimic the wounds of countless UFO-related animal mutilation cases that have been reported in Europe, North Central South America, and everywhere in between since the 60s. On first glance, they would seem to be the uh, debunker's worst nightmare. <laughs> now, I'm not saying by that statement that Animal mutilation cases are legit. I mean, we'll look into that and then we'll find out. But I haven't really done my study there. But there's one case in particular. What's more disturbing is that Brazilian ufologists and police have uh, been adamant that there may be at least a dozen or more cases similar to the recently uncovered Guaraparanga Reservoir case. If this is true, it is somewhat doubtful that any of this... Uh, potential new material will ever truly see the light of day in its entirety. Given the official attitudes now prevailing in Western power circles, even though that uh, our government in particular, I'm from America, have uh, started investigating UFOs, which is a topic not to be sniffed at. I could dedicate a whole podcast to that. <laughs> yeah. But we can be grateful for even fortuitous disclosures, right? And the Guaraparanga case and its accompanying photographs, oh boy, it's a can of worms, man. <laughs> it really is. I really dug into this one. Obviously, if the data is legitimate, then it becomes increasingly difficult to maintain the position that all visitors are demonstrating a friendly attitude toward humans, regardless of what their agendas may or may not be. I do think they exist, and I think that we've proven that on this show, at least, you know, as far as common sense goes, because that's kind of like the thing of strange places, right? We dice apart these things, and we look at the evidence, and like I said you know, a million times before, and I'll say it in every episode, common sense is extremely lacking in studies of the paranormal and, you know, uh, stuff like that. I think common sense, people want so much for this stuff to exist, and they overlook things like mad. Is this one of them? We'll see. <laughs> um, 
This is an odd one, man. It's hard to know even find out where to start. The Guaraparanga situation indicates that there is at least one group of alien visitors to the planet who have had a complete disdain for human sensibilities, human life, who in fact could care less about the value of it at all. My interest has been stimulated in this case for a very long time. And I, uh, I'm i not going to tell you to go rush out and look at the photographs. They're not for the faint of heart, trust me. If you're squeamish at all, do not look these photographs up. They, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff like this and I'm into true crime and, you know, granted, you're going to see some pretty fucked up photos. But these bug me. It's, these photos are, are terrifying. And if they're real, uh, what it says speaks more than volumes. Now, the specifics of the case are this. E. Garcia learned from her friend, Dr. Rubens Goez, that he was in possession of some odd photos, which had been given to him by his cousin, police technician Rubens Sergio. These were official photos of a body that had been found near Guaraparanga Reservoir on the 29th of September, 1988, of an unnamed male who was, however, later identified. The name of this man has been withheld from all media investigators, including UFO investigators, at the request of his relative. So he has been identified. Amazingly. And I'll tell you why. After studying the photos, E. Garcia was impressed with how similar the wounds of the body were to those found on the carcasses of so many so-called uh, cattle mutilations. The original investigating police officials and medical doctors involved with the case had no knowledge or wasn't aware of the specifics of how cattle mutilations were done as far as what the carcasses looked like and how they were, uh, for a lack of um, eloquency, diced up. Surprisingly, the head of the primary investigation offered his files on the case. This is the stroke of luck, <laughs> which we could all be thankful that this happened, giving us the small bit of info that we have. And if what we have is the small bit of info, I am terrified as to what the entire case looks like, what's actually been withheld, if this is what we have. And if this is a little bit, right? The initial police report was not extraordinary, believe it or not, um, except for the recognition that the body, although extremely mutilated, had not met with unusual violence. That means there were no signs of struggle at all or the application of bondage of any kind. Now, it was the autopsy report itself that was pretty unsettling. And especially when we uh, compare the remarks made there with what we learned from animal mutilation cases, supposed ones. Just by making this statement, I'm not going to say that they exist. I'm just, you we'll dive into that on this show sometime, guaranteed. But I'm just telling you, what we know about supposed animal mutilation cases. It's imperative to remember <laughs> that the individuals conducting the autopsy had no knowledge of similar animal mutilation cases. Specifically, everybody knows what the fuck they are. But in terms of how they were actually... Um, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about? How they were... Um, like uh, The condition that the cadavers were in. What exactly happened to them? the incisions, removals of certain organs, whatnot. So this makes the official remarks of the report all the more revealing in retrospect. Can we prove <laughs> that they had no knowledge of what happens in cattle mutilations? That's a pretty big thing. So that raises an eyebrow for me right there. They didn't know about cattle mutilation cases where they live in a cave. But, you know, I'm willing to suspend disbelief there. Now, E. Garcia... This is Brazil, by the way. I already said that? Yeah. <laughs> Receives copies of seven photos. Mm. Looking at them right now, they're not easy to they're not they're not easy to look at. The work of the perpetrator or perpetrators of this human atrocity. And I don't say that lightly. The kind of cuts made, the precision of the cuts, the removal of entire internal organs through small apertures. <clears throat> the lack of bleeding, the failure of a 
body to smell or decompose, decompose rapidly, which was something in the autopsy report. Obviously, I can't prove that either. But this was done by very competent officials. This doesn't look rushed. This doesn't look like bullshit. Now, all these wounds are hallmarks of a UFO-related animal mutilation. It looks, you know, apparently it's like the same thing. So as we dive into this, these peculiarities would seem to rule out revenge killing, uh, you know, cult-like behavior, cattle mutilators. This goes beyond even the capacities of Jack the fucking Ripper. And I don't say that lightly either. And we're going to describe a few of the photos for you, the ones that I've managed to get anyway. Photo number one is a face and an upper torso. The body was... Well, rigor mortis had not set in. It was estimated that the victim had been killed 48 to uh, 72 hours previous of the photos or previous, you know, discovery. There were no signs of animal pred... Uh, pred uh, I can't say that word. <laughs> There's no signs of <laughs> predators or putrefaction, which might be expected. Strangely, there was no odor to the cadaver. And I buy that. A lot of people think that part of it's bullshit because, oh, we can't be there to smell... Like I said, these were done by very competent doctors. Bleeding from the wounds had been minimal. Black coloration found in the face area, what was left of it, and I'll get to that. In other places within the photo is partly due to low light exposure when this photo and others were taken. It's also partially due to coagulated blood in the wound areas. As can be clearly seen, flesh and lips have been excised around the mandibles, as is common in cattle animal mutilations. What I mean by that, <clears throat> I hate to get all medical on you, no skin around the teeth, or jaw for that matter. No lips, nothing. The autopsy report noted that the eyes and ears were removed and the mouth cavity was emptied. Removal of these body parts, including the tongue, as here is common in animal mutilation cases, but is also common in, you know, the animal scavenging. So let's go deeper here. As E. Garcia rightly recognized, if a comparison of the victim with animal mutilation cases is made, you can see that they're the same. And this, uh, this, this is from, from E. Garcia, okay, not me. I'm quoting here. And that is also the conclusion of experienced doctors. The doctors drew their conclusion only after they'd been shown photographs of similar animal mutilation cases, which I think was a mistake. I'm just throwing that out there. They shouldn't have done that. Because that could even subconsciously sway the results. I don't dig that part of it. That's another raised eyebrow. But the autopsy report says, there's been a removal of extensive tissue among many parts of the face, head, and neck of the victim. There's also been extraction of ocular tissue, eyes, auditive internal and external organs, like ears. The entire parts of the head, the tongue, and several muscles were also extracted surgically. The kinds of cuts on the cadaver are not what we've come to expect in UFO, even animal mutilation cases of primary interest in their precision. The surgery, or butchery as I would call it, was done with agility and care and probably with great speed. Like I said, no bondage involved, no rigor mortis. The lack of profuse bleeding suggests, suggests, not proves, that a laser-like instrument producing acute heat almost... And there's evidence that these wounds were almost instantly cauterized. This is speculation on my part. Although there are numerous precedents, many of the cases studied in the U.S. exhibit this kind of high heat rapid surgery. Whether it would uh, still be possible to test fragments of the flesh from the victim's wound areas is very doubtful. Suffice it to say that the wounds appear... Uh, to be exact replicas of cases studied in, you know, cattle mutilations. It's it's bizarre. And I'll get, well, I mean, since we're <laughs> kind of getting into each photo one at a time, I was going to save this for a little bit later. But we have to analyze each photo at a time, so I'll kind of say it now. This guy looked like he died mid-scream. And I know a lot of the muscles were removed in the face. Uh, skin was removed around the mandible, which would probably cause the jaw to just hang open. But, you know, we can't see the look in the eyes. They're gone. 
it just looks to me, and like I said, your first instinct is always the best, right? When you're studying this stuff, it looks to me like this man died absolutely terrified. Just fucking terrified. And that was my first instinct. So photo number two above, uh, you know, the photo number two, the face and the upper torso with the arms outstretched. Perhaps it's best to begin with several quotes from the autopsy report. So excuse the uh, medical ease. We'll try to decipher it as best we can. The auxiliary regions on both sides showed soft spots where organs had been removed. Incisions were made on the face, internal thorax, abdomen, legs, arms, chest. As Garcia observed, the doctor stated that these wounds were quite uncommon. The report also observed shoulders and arms have perforations of one to one and a half inches in diameter, where tissue and muscles were very carefully extracted. The edges of the perforations were uniform and so was their size. The chest had shrunk due to the removal of internal organs. Now, in other words, internal organs were removed or sucked out somehow through these tiny circular incisions. They were very small. Why such a technique? This is what I wonder. And during my research, you know, some doctors today are using a similar method to remove diseased tissue and organs from their human subjects. This kind of procedure um, injures these organs in the process. So did the surgeons who worked on this victim care whether the organs were injured or not? I mean, what kind of specimens were they looking for? What kind of research is this? Wouldn't it be easier and more medically, uh, you know, <laughs> feasible to abduct a human specimen and study it live, including its anatomy and physiology, in a properly equipped laboratory, or make larger incisions to remove the organs whole? It would appear that the perpetrators of this act didn't care if the man's life was lost, nor did they care uh, what condition the body was found in. Here we have strong indication of a total disregard for this human being, and by extension, human life in general. When I'm saying that these cuts, don't make no mistake. Like I said, these photos are not for the faint of heart. Look at them if you need to. I'm warning you. Mm. This, this, is, this was a butchery. Plain and simple. This is absolutely brutal. And when I say things like surgically removed or sucked out or cleanly done, uh, it's 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 very difficult to describe. This was total disregard. And like I said, this man looked like he died scared out of his fucking mind. And the body was left like human trash. The photo clearly so shows the uh, symmetrical holes in the man's arms. One arm clearly shows the sunken area near the perforation clearly demonstrating where muscle had been extracted through a tiny opening, mind you. The shrunken chest area indicates a similar process of internal extractions. It is significant that the police and medical examiners were convinced the holes found in the head, arm, stomach, anus, and legs were not produced by bullet wounds. Photo number three, there's a close-up of the left side of the victim's head. Here we see that the ear is cleanly excised. As the report states, auditive internal and external matter was removed. The photo doesn't show the small holes discovered in the cranium. These were detected, though. How much, if any, of the brain tissue was removed isn't known. Photo number four, there's a close-up of the lower torso, including the thighs. The stretcher, pants, and cord that are visible belong to the rescue team. So if you see that in the photos, that's what that's from. The autopsy report says you can find the removal of the belly button, leaving a 1.5 inch hole in the abdomen and a depressed abdominal cavity showing the removal of the intestines. Brazilian doctors who later viewed the evidence were left non-pulsed by the hole in the umbilical area where it appeared. A great amount of internal organs were extracted and damaged in the process. The edge of the hole was perfect and shows a precision cut. Also, the abdominal area of the body was very shrunken, like we said, because of organ removal. The original autopsy report notes that the scrotum was also removed by a 3 by 1.5 centimeter elliptical incision. Strangely, the, like I said, you know, disclaimer, this is going to get brutal. 
The penis itself was left intact, although it appears to have been stretched to about twice its normal length. Why excise the scrotum without taking the main member, right? Human logic is... Def this is just... <laughs> I'm speechless. It defies all logic. If... I mean, it's just the fact that this was so surgically and precisely done, the things extracted were damaged on the way out, at least as how we would do it. Our methods cause the damage that we use. This ain't the act of animals. This probably is not the act of some kind of serial killer. It's This thing really took some time. And if you go the alien angle, which we'll discuss that in further detail later, but if you go that angle, if you were to travel to another planet and um, analyze specimens, you're going to make damn sure you don't damage anything on the way out. Would you treat the specimen so callously like this? Especially if it's laying on the table screaming its ass off, which is how it looks like this guy died. Now... The great similarity here with other animal mutilation cases, quote-unquote, particularly female cattle, where it's not unusual to see anus, teats, vagina, uterus completely extracted. But what exactly, uh, why exactly this is done is a mystery as to who the exact perpetrators are. Although there's strong enough circumstantial evidence, according to some, and we'll get to that, to implicate UFO involvement. Now, the hole in the left leg uh, duplicates in size the umbilical hole in the arm hole previously discussed. In the words of the autopsy report, it was an elliptical incision, 3 by 1.5 centimeters. The penis was stretched and had no signs of being cut. The testicles were extracted with a precision cut. Rather startling is the lack of pubic hair as if the victim had been readied for surgery. Now, if you look at these photos, uh, I'll just say it like it is. I don't mean to be gross. Very hairy guy. <laughs> He's a hairy mammal. But he looks like he'd been prepped. Early on in the investigation, Brazilian official investigators considered the possibility that the castration of the victim was an act of revenge. They soon rejected this theory because it could not account for the remaining wounds and the other peculiarities related to the body. What is more, revenge seekers who castrate usually excise the whole thing. Right. And plus, the cuts were surrounded by very well-defined burn marks. This was done with a laser. Photo number five, victim is lying on his stomach. The autopsy report says removal of the anus and a hole between the second and third toes. The anal orifice of the victim was extracted with a large incision, three by six inches in diameter. The rectum and other internal parts of the human discharge system were gone entirely. Layman's terms, this guy was cored out. No rigor mortis, no bloodletting. For all intents and purposes, this guy was cord out while he was still alive it's probable that even some of the internal org organs of the man could have been removed through this particular incision what's most compelling about the anal incision and the extraction of anal and digestive tract tissue is that it is a carbon copy of the surgery we've seen in a lot of the animal mutilation cases and um I'll just say it like it is. Are we supposed to believe that a revengeful that a vengeful human or a group of fucking Satanists are capable of such precise, difficult surgical techniques and procedures, which leave even medical professionals confused as hell as to how they could have been done? I don't know. You tell me. Has the Brazilian and or American government staged a demonstration at the Guaraparanga Reservoir to frighten UFO investigators? There's a lot of what what have you's here. Pe people are all over the fence on this thing. Uh, you know, on, on both sides of the fence, rather. It would seem a fortuitous turn of events that ufologists E. Garcia uh, had the right friends in the right places at the right time. If our government, and presumably the Brazilian government, has kept a lid on similarly sensational material in the past, I have no doubt there's more ample evidence supporting such a contention here we have an accidental bubble that has, against all odds, uh, all odds, in my opinion, escaped the pot. 
Now, these photos are definitely causing a stir, causing a lot of people, including some UFO investigators, to do some new thinking. But the powers that control lids will be carefully double-checking in the near future, I I would assume, (laughs) to make sure that pot is as secure as possible. Thus, if, if this is true, I would not get my hopes up that any additional homicidal UFO-related human mutilation cases and graphic photographs accompanying them will surface probably ever again. If we discard the possibility of the Guaraparanga case as a piece of misinformation, we're left with several weird alternatives. Is this the infrequent act of a rogue extra- extraterrestrial group which from time to time enjoys indulging themselves in a pathological blood sport at the expense of humans. That's what this is. It was brutal. It was, it was beyond, this is what I'm getting at. These photos are beyond scientific. This would make Jack the Ripper queasy. More likely, uh, some people say that we're indirect witnesses to an intentionally, intentionally contemptuous act by a group or species of extraterrestrial origin who would like to give another visiting species a bad name or has complete contempt for humans or harness mankind into a greater fear mentality than that already binds it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, at present, the rumors of human body parts found on at least one crashed UFO in the 1940s, which we'll get to, Body parts found in a barn in the state of Oregon several years ago or the rumor of a mutilated Vietnam B-52 crew will still have to remain just that, rumors. And we'll discuss these. And not to get too off of track here. We've seen in the past, especially in Brazil, many cases where human beings have been said anyway that they've been attacked by UFOs and their occupants. Brazil seems to be a hotspot for these stories. More so than anywhere else. In North America, reports of brutal manhandling by UFO occupants are very rare. Now, without getting off track, we need to look at these photos for what they are. Like I said, first instinct is always the best. I I have trouble looking at these pictures. This is a contempt for the human form, a contempt for life itself that I have never seen. And I've seen crime photos of Ted Bundy. I've seen uh, photos of John Wayne Gacy's victims. I've seen retouched and colored Jack the Ripper photos. I've seen Ed Gein's photos of Bernice Warden dressed out like a deer in his home. And I'm telling you, I've never seen contempt for human life like this. This is surgical precision. Like I said, as far as our methods... I'm not saying it's extraterrestrial just yet. I'm saying at least with our methods, the way that these organs were extracted, they would be useless to anybody studying them. They would be even useless as a serial killer's trinkets, right? Serial killers like to do this kind of stuff. Jack the Ripper was mailing pieces of, uh, you know, uh, what uh, Marianne Nichols, mailing pieces of her liver to the police. And stated that he actually ate the rest of it. But that is exceptionally rare. These people, if they don't consume what they take out of the victim, which is also in itself quite rare, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer being one of those, these are... uh, Serial killers would would not very likely want a shredded organ. And keep in mind that rigor mortis had not set in the blood flow, tissue morbidity indicated that this had happened while this guy was alive and conscious. Like I said, first, uh, you know, first impression is always <laughs> the way to go. If it's not correct, which it usually is, actually, that's definitely where you should start. So was this done by extraterrestrials? We have no reports of UFOs being seen at the time. We have no other evidence of any kind of human mutilation at all. But I'm telling you, I don't know if I believe in cattle mutilation or not. 
it makes a lot of sense to me, actually. Because you need to put yourself in in that scenario. You go to another planet, you see that it has life forms on it. You're going to do that. You're going to... I mean, even if we had a fucking alien, you know, that we've captured, we're going to... We're going to fucking dice it apart. We're going to remove things. We're going to study it. But what gets me is the violence, the sheer amount of violence of this procedure. Now, if these, there's only two conclusions I can draw as far as the extraction of the organs, because I think that's very important. If it was our methods, those organs would be useless. And even if it was some kind of serial killer or something like that, We know it's not animals. We can completely rule that out. If it was a serial killer or something like that, what would a serial killer want with completely destroyed organs? It's Brazil. We could rule out the black market thing as well. It's gone. So, this, what I, the conclusion that I draw is with that in mind, this was done on purpose purpose, knowing that these organs were going to be destroyed to specifically cause this guy as much pain as humanly possible, or it was done with a technology that we don't have. Those are the only two ways you can look at this. Keep in mind, this was done while this cat was alive. As a matter of fact, the autopsy report states in the cause of death that this man had died from a heart attack due to shock. Not physical shock, mind you. This guy, his heart pretty much just pounded itself to death. What does that sound like to you? If you look at the face, this this guy died while he was being cored out alive. Like I said, due to the blood flow, tissue morbidity. This dude was, this guy was alive. And the look on the face, I know that there were no muscles holding the jaw jaw open. My first instinct told me this guy died screaming his fucking ass off. That's scary. These photos are really hard to look at. This looks like, and I'm not confirming the cattle mutilation thing. We'll dive into that in a later episode. But it looks just like them. It looks just like the the, the photos that we have of quote-unquote extraterrestrial cattle mutilations. We don't know what causes that. What? So at the end of this, what do we say? Do we say that this is extraterrestrial? Do we debunk this? Is it inconclusive? In my opinion, logic tells me, logic tells me that our method of extracting these organs would destroy the organs. I know I keep going back to that, but this is this is the most important thing about these photos, in my opinion. These are the most important thing because you've got to remember, like I said, put yourself in that situation. You go to another planet, you study these life forms. You're not going to destroy shit. You're going to study it. If anything, you need it intact so you can dissect it. This was done scientifically this was done systematically it says in the autopsy report but it doesn't take a genius to see that in the photos this was done surgically and we can agree on that (laughs) looking at these photos just fucking look at them for what they are this was done surgically he was prepped yes it was done while he was alive complete contempt for humanity there sickening But this is a surgical procedure. We can determine that for a fact. Now, with this being a surgical procedure, our methods for extracting organs do not jive with the wounds on the body. What does that tell you? That tells you that something else is at play here. Either this... I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This guy was operated on by a technology that we still don't have. That is apparent to me. That's black and white, clear as fucking crystal. Everything else, all the other evidence be damned. What's staring me right in the face is that this is a surgical procedure and the methods 
that any anybody who's not even a scientist, not even a doctor, you're right. <laughs> you yourself, you know, your Uncle Jim <laughs> goes to another planet, discovers other life forms, and you're told, okay, study these things. What are you going to do? You're going to dissect it. You're not going to destroy anything. You're going to keep as much intact as you possibly can. You're going to have the best samples that you can get. This doesn't make any sense if it was us. It doesn't make any sense at all. We have concluded that this is a surgical procedure and there is just no basis for removing organs in this manner during a surgery. This wasn't torture. We can rule all that out. This was a surgery. So what are we left with? I think, my opinion, this was done with a technology that doesn't exist. As far as what we know, was this uh, some kind of top secret government thing? Was this guy, uh, did he get too close to something he shouldn't have been doing? Very little is known about him, but he's not uh, in any kind of uh, conspiracy circles or government circles or anything like that. For all we know, this is just normal dude. And he wasn't involved with any of this stuff. No red flags are popping up as far as his personal life. So it had to have been something that we don't know about, something he got a little close to. Maybe he was studied because of that by our own government or their government or what have you. Or I had to be one of those tinfoil hat guys or the fucking history channel or it was extraterrestrials. So I'm not going to... I mean, the question here is, is the Guara... Uh, I, I, I got to slow this one down. Guaraparanga. Is the Guaraparanga mutilation extraterrestrials? That's that's the, the main question here. I think that's extremely likely. I'm not going to just flat out say it is. Like I said in a few episodes ago, I had a grandfather that worked in aerospace for 36 years. And he told me, he was working on the stealth before people even he actually helped design the propulsion system for the stealth. But I don't even need to go there to convince you that the technologies that we have available to the public, the government knew about it 10 years before we did. That's common sense. So that's possible, too, that that could have happened with this guy. I'm not just going to jump in and say, yeah, actually, it was extraterrestrials. It's just as likely that this was done surgically with a uh, method that we that exists somewhere, but not to the public. So we're going to say that this one, we're not even going to say inconclusive. We're just going to say we got to keep an eyeball on this one. Uh, I guess that is the definition of inconclusive, right? We can't prove it or, dis or disprove it. So that's what I'm labeling this one, inconclusive. Um, it's very compelling. And I really want to say this was extraterrestrial. So I really do. That part of my brain is just lighting up right now. But we have to be logical about it. What do you guys think about the, about the uh, Guara Paringa mutilation case? Have you heard about it? Is this the first time you've heard of it? Let me know, man. Go on Asylum817.com. That's Asylum817.com for all things strange places related. Leave me, uh, drop me a line. Leave me a message. Let's get a discussion going. Have you heard of this case? What do you think about it? Do you think it's legit? Have I missed some crucial piece of evidence that would blow this whole thing out of the wa out of the water one way or the other? Let me know. Asylum817.com. So on there, you'll see uh, also the link to our Patreon page where you can get uh, early access to shows, your own podcast just for being a patron. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> giveaways at certain tiers, all kinds of stuff. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. This was a really, really interesting one. I've been fascinated about it for a long time. And disclaimer again, if you're faint of heart, if you're squeamish, do not look up these photos. Just don't do it. They're very, very difficult to process. So anyway, guys, I will catch you later on the next episode. Will we ever run out of strange places? Oh, I doubt it. Because every town has a strange place. And maybe one day, we'll visit yours.